In this video, I'll show you how to fetch ERC20 token data using Quick Nodes easy to use API. Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. This video is sponsored by QuickNode. QuickNode is a globally distributed network of nodes servicing hundreds of billions of API responses a month. QuickNode gives developers access to enterprise-grade infrastructure trusted by some of the largest companies in Web3. When you're building a user-facing dApp, there's often a lot of boilerplate you have to build along with the actual business logic of the app you're building. A lot of that boilerplate comes from displaying token balances for your user. This can become a bit tedious because you're gonna have to fetch those token balances from every single token that you allow to be used in your dApp. And you may end up having to query all this information straight from the blockchain from each and every individual token smart contract. Another way to do this is to install some library so you can talk to some third party the API. What if I told you there was a way to do this using a special RPC call on the dedicated node that you're already using? Quick Node provides just that. If your application already requires a dedicated blockchain node, it's very likely that you're already using something like Quick Node for this. The benefit of Quick Node dedicated nodes is that they allow you to query for tokens along with using the standard Ethereum RPC calls. In this video, I'll show you how to do this using just ethers, which you're probably already using in your dApp anyway. Before we get started, if you're new, here at What The Funk, we talk about all things Web3 and blockchain development. If that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get into the code. So for this particular demonstration, we're gonna be using SvelteKit. You can use any JS framework you like, but I happen to like Svelte a lot, so that's what we'll be using. I'm gonna create a new Svelte kit project. We'll choose the skeleton project, TypeScript, ESLint, prettier. We don't need any browser testing, and that's it. We'll CD into our directory, open up our text editor, and the file we're gonna be looking for is in the source directory, routes, page.svelte. Before we get started, we need to add a few more libraries. So I open up another terminal. We're gonna add Tailwind for styling, as well as Tailwind Forms for form styling. And the last library we need is Ethers, and this will allow us to talk to our Quick Node. So with all that set up, let's go ahead and run our dev server. And if we open our server URL, we have the boilerplate that was created for us when we created our project. So we can get rid of all of this. What we're gonna be building is a simple dashboard that takes in a wallet address and then display some token balances. So to do that, we're gonna create a quick little form. So here I've just created a simple div with an input and a button to fetch the balances. And this is all using Tailwind again for styling. And a quick pro tip, if you wanna quickly prototype some things using Tailwind for styling, you can go to hyperui.dev. That's where I get a lot of my uh, quick components from. You can just basically copy and paste and tweak things to your liking and easily create some UI so you can test some things out. Now if we open up our app, we see this form that should accept a wallet address and it has a button to fetch some balances. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do in order to make this happen. Back in our code, we need to create a script tag. We'll set the lang to TS so we can have all the nice typings. First thing we're gonna do is import ethers and the ethers utils from the ethers package. Now we need an actual node to talk to. So let's head over to quick node. So as you see, I've already created an account on quick node and I've already created a node on quick node. But if you haven't signed up to quick node yet, you can sign up and quick node will allow you to try out a node for free. So go ahead and sign up for quick node, create your first node, and you can try out all the things we try out in this video. So if I click on my node, it gives me an HTTP provider. I'm going to head and copy that URL. And back in my code, I'm going to set my provider as the provider on Quick Node using Ethers Providers JSON RPC Provider. And don't even try to copy this key for this node because I will delete it after this video. Next, we need a variable to store our wallet address. And we need a function to run when we click the fetch button. So let's create a function called fetch balances. First, we want to check to make sure the wallet that we entered is a valid address. Otherwise, we alert the user and then exit this function. Next, we're going to fetch the tokens for that wallet using provider.send. And notice this qn underscore get wallet token balance. This is a special RPC call that's provided only on quick node in order to fetch token balances for a specific wallet. This RPC call takes a wallet parameter 
and we're just going to pass the value of wallet address, which we set above. In Svelte, you can attach a variable using the bind directive. So we're going to bind this input to wallet address and then add an on click event to fetch balances. So back in our app, let's go ahead and paste an address. For this demo, we'll use Vitalik's address and let's open up a console real quick. So click fetch balances. As you can see, it returns an object and on this object, it has an assets array. And in this assets array, you get a handful of tokens. So rather than wade through all of these different tokens that a lot of spam bots have probably sent Vitalik over the years, we'll focus on a few specific tokens. And luckily with the quick note API, you can filter through tokens by their contract address. So I've gone ahead and modified our call and included this contracts parameter. And it takes an array with simply the contract addresses of the tokens you want to filter for. So in this case, we will filter for WEF, USDC, and USDT. Back in our app, if we fetch the balances again, we only get the three tokens that we actually asked for. Let's go ahead and add a few bits of code and some markup to display our token balances in a nice pretty dashboard. First, I'm gonna create a variable called fetching and this will be true only while we are waiting for the token balances to pull and a balances array to hold all the balances that we fetched from the API. So before we make the call, we set fetching to true after the call, we set balances to the assets array returned in the results object. And then we add a finally clause to our try catch to set fetching back to false. So even if the fetch fails, we stop displaying the loading indicator down below. In Svelte, you can display HTML conditionally using this if else markup. So the first part of this if else is testing whether or not fetching is true. If it's true, we're going to show this message saying fetching tokens and we've got this nice little tailwind animation that will kind of pulse as it's fetching for the tokens. And then in this else block, this is where we're going to display the token balances as soon as fetching has been set to false. Now after the call, we check the balances array. If it has more than zero elements, we're going to go ahead and display this component down here with the heading for symbol, name, and the amount. And then for each of the balances in the balance array, we're going to display its logo. I've already gone ahead and downloaded the logos for those three tokens that we're filtering for. And when we fetch the symbol from that token, uh, it's basically just going to substitute that and pull the correct file name for that logo. And then we also display the symbol and display the name and then we display the amount of tokens in the wallet using the utils.format units function. And all this does is take the amount of decimal places that's set in the token contract and uses those decimal places to correctly format the balance. Back in our app, if we hit fetch balances again, you can see that the fetch tokens message showed up for a few seconds. And now we see our balances in this cool little table. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to fetch token information using QuickNote's token API. But wait, there's more. QuickNote also allows you to pull NFT information using the same API. So back in our code, let's see how that would look. So the code for doing that is very similar to fetching tokens in your wallet. To fetch NFTs, you can simply call QN underscore fetch NFTs. And just like the first call, you just pass in the wallet address. So let's go ahead and console log that out and see what that looks like. We'll fetch our balances. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer. We still get our token balances, but in our console, let's go ahead and check the results. Just like the ERC20 tokens, we get this assets array. And in the assets array, we get our individual NFTs. Each NFT is populated with its collection name, its ID, the contract address, description, image URL, and everything else you would probably need to display it nicely in a UI. Let's go back to our code and create a nice UI for it. We go ahead and create an NFTs array. This will store all of our fetched NFTs. And just like with the tokens, we will take the assets array and store that in the NFTs variable. If you notice one quick thing I did was add a filter and basically I'm filtering out any NFTs that don't actually have an image URL because we really don't want to display any NFTs that don't have an image. And down below the markup for our tokens, we create another if block 
and this will check the length of the NFTs array. If it's greater than zero, then we'll go ahead and show the markup for those NFTs. And it's basically just a nice simple grid that I copied from Hyper UI. And for each NFT in our array, we're going to basically make it clickable and it will take you to the page on OpenSea. Uh, and so we can grab the NFT collection address, which is the contract address for the NFT and then the token ID. And these parts of the URL will help it route to the correct page on OpenSea. We'll go ahead and show the collection token ID, the name and the collection name. And the most important part is displaying the image. Let's go ahead and fetch our tokens again. Fetching. So we fetched our token bounces. And if we scroll down below, we can see a bunch of NFTs. Now this doesn't look the best. The problem with NFTs is that spammers can send you any kind of NFTs. Some NFTs don't follow standard. So sometimes the images don't work or don't load, or sometimes the IDs are crazy looking. You're just going to have to tweak that um, for yourself when you create your own app to make it look the best. But you can see basically what I was trying to do here. And that's it. That's how easy it is to query ERC20 token data as well as NFT data using Quick Node's easy to use API. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.